I believe our very lives are a matter of stewardship. The way that we use what we have matters to the one who made us. He intended for us to manage this life and all that comes with it. This is a podcast to connect the dots of all the ways we manage the substance of our lives, from heart work to housework, from relationships to identity, from purpose to desires, wellness, creativity, and everything that makes up our lives. This is a sisterhood centered on Christ. On this podcast, I'll be sharing thoughts and transparent talks on what God is teaching me as I wear these different hats and manage various things just like you do, only differently in my own style for his glory. Listen in. You are listening to episode 20 of the Style and Stewardship Podcast. When it comes to stewardship, I don't think that anything is left out. As a matter of fact, I believe that there are some really, really um, important areas of our lives that if we don't have intentionality about them and if we are not focused on making sure we are making the best decisions in those areas, it can affect so many other areas. So when it comes to our minds, our minds are renewed by the word of God. Decision-making, wisdom, all of those things hinge upon the believer doing what, what God calls us to do in different areas of our lives and in the way that a believer should handle them based on who we are in Christ. When it comes to our mental and spiritual, and when it comes to our physical, I believe that all of these areas um, have to be stewarded wisely. Um, And the difference between a manager and a steward is the fact that um, there are things that God calls us to manage for him, and that's what makes us stewards. So... It's so important that we make wise decisions in every area of our lives, knowing that how we manage them is going to affect our entire lives, the way that we live and the way that we move in this world and the amount of, of joy and peace and things like that that we have. It's, it's, to, it's completely attached to doing things with God in mind and managing things with God in mind. And that is stewardship so when it comes to our bodies we can't leave that out our health is extremely important because how can we carry out the things that god is calling us to do if we are physically unable and i'm not talking about people who have um, disabilities or things like that i'm talking about the things that we can affect i'm talking about health and wellness from a nutrition standpoint Um, What we bring into our bodies is going to affect how our bodies function and perform. And before we go any further, let me just say, (laughs) let me give my disclaimer. I am not a medical professional and nothing I say is to be used um, or, or accepted as medical advice. It is not to treat, cure, or diagnose any medical condition. Okay, so... Definitely take that up with your doctor. But as someone who is really, really fascinated with how um, our bodies perform and function based on the foods that we eat and the things that we take in, I'm just a lifelong learner when it comes to health and wellness. Um, Funny story. (laughs) Um, My first blog was actually started in March of 2013. And it was a blog about food and faith. And I shared um, information about nutrition science. I shared devotionals. And that blog is actually still up. And one day I might have the nerve to point you towards it. (laughs) But it's just so bad when I look at it. Um, Thank God for improvement, right? But funny enough, God brought me full circle when... I was um, thinking about this blog and, and the podcast that, that I started and, and the YouTube channel and all of those things and um, just wondering, honestly, if anybody even cared. <laughs> and then I realized like, oh, a lot of people actually care about their health and their wellness and their, um, their, their spirit 
in their mind. Um, and I wasn't alone in this. And I thought, okay, um, because when I'm on online, I am just always looking for an easier way to eat healthy or a new nutrition hack. Um, a lot of times I'm reading medical journals and different things, and I am forever changing the way that we eat. Ask my husband. <laughs> He's always on board, thankfully. But this, when I think about when the seed was planted, can you think about like what you're doing right now? And, and you maybe didn't see yourself doing it in the way that you're doing it, but there was a seed planted long ago or something in your heart long ago where you're like, I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, when it comes to faith and nutrition, it's like, I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. How that ends up turning out, I don't know. But I do know this. Um, well, back to my, my little, my blog that I first started um, back in 2013. I actually stopped it because we were trying to conceive and um, ended up having our son and, and we were living out of town. It was a whole thing. So back then it was really, really lengthy and thank God for podcasting because <laughs> if I wrote as much as I spoke, it would be like a 15 minute read per blog post, I'm sure. But anyways, when it comes to our stewardship of our lives in general, um, this is this all everything that I do is about stewardship of our entire lifestyle because I don't think that God leaves anything out and I don't think that we should either. But when it comes to eating healthy and, and feeling good and feeling like our food is actually nourishing us, I have I just have a passion for wellness. And um, I know that one of the things that was planted long ago, actually, it's kind of hard to talk about, um, but my granny um, passed away some years ago and she actually passed away from ultimately from her dietary choices and um, she was you know the matriarch of our family um, there were no like men in our family except for my brothers and she was that strong woman in our family that just got things done just did things if we needed something you know I'm one of seven kids. Usually it was granny to the rescue. You know what I mean? Um, and she was just such a fixture in our lives. And um, long story short, um, she had so many health conditions and I would go to go with her to her multiple doctor's appointments. And they sometimes they were two in one day. Sometimes they were several in a week. Um, and her, I just watched her health deteriorate. Um, I moved down, down South and, and went to college. She actually ended up retiring. Um, and my sister moved down as well, my older sister. And, um, she, she didn't eat great when we were living in New York, but mind you, she, I mean, you're up and down. Even if you have a car, you're not trying to drive it. <laughs> um, so, you know, you take the MTA and, you know, she would take several trains and a bus or a taxi to get to work. Um, and she ended up, you know, coming down south and you have to drive everywhere now. So before when she had to at least you know, she was, she had to exercise every day. Now she no longer had to. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all of this to tell you that her health caught up with her and her food choices. Um, she started experiencing, um, many symptoms, gout, um, an enlarged heart, type two diabetes, obesity. Um, I can go down the line. There's actually a longer list than that, but I'll leave it at those. And one of the things that I learned because, you know, she was always trying to get fast food and have stuff delivered. And, and I remember saying to her, like, gee, you shouldn't be eating that. I went to your doctor's appointment. He said, you're not even supposed to have that. But it was from a standpoint of sodium and her losing weight. No one ever talked to her about nutrition. Um, she was never even sent to a nutritionist. Huh. Anyways, it's, it's just, it's heartbreaking because... I believe in my heart of hearts that she would still be here if she would have gotten hold of 
of her nutrition, if she would have gotten a hold of what she was eating. And, and it's a real issue in our family where um, type two diabetes is a thing. But when I started researching for myself and when I started looking at ingredients, this started back in 2009 when I really, really got heavy into watching documentaries and reading books. And um, I started Googling things and I started cutting out I can say that's when my wellness journey really started. Um, and I started reading ingredients and I started cutting out parabens and cutting out artificial ingredients. And I went dairy free for a little while to clear up my cystic acne. And I just had this long, long, I have a long, long list of, of all of this, but I want to keep this um, episode as short as I can <laughs> um, because there's so much more to come. But type two diabetes is not something that you are guaranteed to have, even if it quote unquote runs in your family. Because what typically runs in our families more than anything is habits. So her, I remember, you know, coming down south with my grandmother and we would visit great granny. And I remember visiting her in the nursing home. She had diabetes, type two diabetes. She had to have both of her legs amputated down from the knee and she couldn't do anything for herself. She couldn't even go to the restroom for herself. I know that this is probably, I hope this isn't graphic, but this is just real life. And this is, you know, what our family has experienced. And I remember thinking, I don't want to live like that. That's no way to live. And I started Googling things and I started trying to cook some of my grandmother's meals. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew what she was doing wasn't working. And type two diabetes, she ended up having that because her mother had that not because it was passed through blood or, or, or it was hereditary. Even if things run in our families does not mean that we have to get those things. It does not mean that we have to have those things. And type two diabetes is something that is actually controllable by diet and exercise, eating right, having enough fiber. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but it is a preventable chronic illness that is brought on by poor dietary choices. So, Anyways, it just broke my heart. And it was one of those things that was the, the catalyst. I, I was already going down that road and it was the catalyst to, for me personally to get my health in check and to get my health in order. And long story short, um, during this pandemic, um, my husband just said to me, he's like, why don't you actually like why don't you do something with this because you're every who's like I cannot like go a week without you telling me something we're tweaking in our diet or something new we need to add because it's really great for us or something we need to some process you need to change in the kitchen and I have I'm a foodie <laughs> and I'm also kind of a nutrition nerd and he's just like why don't you like look into some sort of school for it I knew I didn't want to go the traditional route because I don't want to hand down, you know, certain guidelines that's handed down from the government that a lot of times is backed by really, really huge corporations that are saying, oh, you know, also add this to your plate. And it's like, because it's going to line your pockets, even though it's not actually good for people. I didn't want to go the standard route. So I went the route of obtaining my holistic nutritionist certification. And I obtained that this past January. It took me about six months um, during the pandemic was the perfect time. And I'm, I'm a lifetime learner anyways. And this is something that I actually did personally for me and for my family, because I really wanted to just have, but I really wanted our family to um, I wanted to change, you know, people throw around the word legacy, but I did. I wanted to change the legacy of our family health wise. And um, my husband's our family, we have um, just some some things that we want to personally avoid. And there were things we didn't want to pass down to our son. Um, and if we eat the way our family members ate and if those were unhealthy ways, those are things that we pick up. But again, it does not mean that that's some sort of destiny. You can make a different choice. And I believe that one of the most important choices that we make is on the other end of our fork most of the time. I just wanted to share a little bit of that. And, you know, you go to the blog and there's a couple of recipes there, but there are about to be a lot more. 
And I just want to share some of the things that we have learned and that I have learned and things that I've implemented over the years that have helped us um, health wise. And by the grace of God, <laughs> um, you know, we we don't get sick very much at all. Um, other than some allergies and some food sensitivities, um, our health is really, really great. And I'm so thankful for that. And I know that a lot of people um, could benefit from just learning a couple of healthy tips and tricks and and just learning how to eat in a healthy way that fits your lifestyle and is also um, just thinking about things in terms of you know, us stewarding the bodies we've been given and not waiting for a doctor or someone, something bad to happen in order for us to take um, our health seriously and the health of our family members seriously. So that is, um, that's going to be coming up on the blog and I'm going to be sharing a couple of recipes on YouTube as well that I hope will be helpful that you can implement into your diet if you want. If you, I just hope that it's educational, encouraging, and we just want to be good stewards over everything that God's given us. And he has not left our bodies and our health and our wellness out of that equation. So until next time, what will you steward well?